down here on our local beach. And this is an area where you guys might be familiar with. That is just a surf beach anywhere around the country. And most surf beaches hold good gutters. And the reason for that is all of the waves push in, that water, the energy hits the beach and it's got to disperse somewhere. So it carves out these deeper channels and it's in those channels where the fish come and forage around for bait. And that's what we're doing today, is trying to emulate a bait fish with our lure, cast it out and get one of those foraging fish. So what have we got here? Out in the back here, we've got a nice big deep fish gutter. In here, we've got a shallow fish gutter. And that shallow gutter is gonna hold things like whiting, brim, and flathead easily. Then we've got that sand bank where the next waves are breaking. And beyond that is the deeper gutter. And that's where I believe we're going to see some fish today. It's a long way out there. In there, you could get jewfish, tailor, big sea brim, and probably a few other species. I need to get this over that shallow gutter into the deep gutter, and that requires a long cast. Come with me and I'll show you exactly how to do it. So I'm looking out at the gutter, it's probably 65, 70 metres. So I need to obtain a 200 foot long cast easily to get out to that. The lure I'm running is not really heavy. It's only 55 grams of Halco Twisty. Love them, they're a really, really good lure. I've also got 40 pound leader on here. I've also got a real quick release snap that's just gonna allow me to change the lure if I have to. I've got 20 pound braid, Kariki braid. I've got a Coastal Revolution Shimano. It's a 12 foot rod, beauty of it, two piece. Therefore I can put it in the back of the truck, no problems whatsoever. And the reel is the XTB long cast. This is the Shimano, it's a bait runner. And I tell you what, this thing's gonna launch that a long way. Plenty of stiffness in that rod and reel to get that lure out. Here's how I cast it. So basically, I wanna keep that lure about a six foot drop from the tip, okay? I'm going to swing it like a pendulum, all right? It's gonna flick on out there, and that weight and that rod is just gonna go twang and flick it out. So this end of town, there's a couple of different ways of casting. Flick the bail arm open. You can either hold it up here like so, lines cocked onto my index finger, and all I'm gonna do here is over, push with this arm here, which is my right arm, and that's pushing the rod down and basically louvering it out straight away. That was a decent cast. A little bit more effort, and I'd obtain that 65, 70 metres, not a problem whatsoever. So we just wind it back in. Okay, so we finally got him back in. The next cast is to, again, Keep the lure about six feet down. And I'm going to here, instead of putting my right hand up the foregrip, I'm going to keep the right hand attached to the reel seat. The line is cocked onto my index finger, and now my left hand comes down the bottom. So I'm going to again punch, but I'm going to really push it hard with my right hand. And as you can see here, over it goes. And I'm gonna give it that nice little flick. Flick it. <sighs> Okay, it's out there. So now, to see that I can get the distance, I'm gonna go and step it out. Let's go for a walk. One, two, three, four, five, nine, 80, 81, 82, 83. And there it is, so 83 meters, approximately. My lure is gonna get out there with ease. Now I need to catch a fish. So we've just come down the beach a little bit further, different style of gutter, and banged it on. Now, keeping that rod tip down, once again, really important. And that drag set nice and light so you can pull it out if you want. Maybe not that much. <laughs> but so there's enough power there for him to actually race off when he has to. Otherwise, when they jump, and as you've seen before, you tend to lose a lot of fish. So keep that rod tip down, super important and work the waves. When the wave comes in, we're going to use that whitewash to drag our fish up the beach really fast. So nice, and there he is, he's out the back. Okay, there's a bit of whitewash there. I'm going to drag him in with that whitewash now. The thing is, once this water starts to run out, <laughs> that's not cool because all that pressure is going against that fish. Oh. Okay, so we've got a bit of pressure. I'm going to race him up here.
Here we go. He's a good tailor. Oh no. We want this whitewash. It's, oh, we don't want his head coming out. Oh, no, 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 no. You use the whitewash, and this is when we're going to land our fish. Here we go. Here we go. And there he is. Look at that for an absolute cracker of a fish. Absolutely stunning. Beautiful big tailor. Lovely colours and absolutely smack that lure like it's nothing. And that is exactly what we're after. Rod tip. So we are forever learning. And I've worked out if you wind too fast, obviously the fish is gonna swipe at the lure and probably just get a, a side hook in the mouth. And good chance when they jump up into the air, you're going to lose them, which is what we've done previously. But if you slow your rate down on your reel, depending on what speed it is on the retrieve, it gives the tailor more time to come up behind it and actually engulf the hooks, therefore a better hook up rate and a solid hookup rate to get that fish back to your feet. So really important to understand whether your reel is maybe a 4.8 to 1 ratio, that's every time you turn the handle, it rotates 4.8 turns, or maybe it's a 6.1, which is a really fast retrieve. Therefore, the faster you wind, your lure is zooming away from the fish, therefore you're not going to get that quality hookup. So, work the speed out of your reel, even if you just drag the lure through the water and think, righto, that's the speed I need to keep it at, and I reckon you might just do a little bit better in getting those fish back to the bank. So what I've done here, I did my drag up a little bit tighter. So when I get that first hook up, that bang, it's tight enough to sink the hooks into the fish's mouth and then I back the drag off, which allows the fish to then obviously run when he wants to run without pulling the hooks out of his mouth as well. Here we go. that bit of whitewash. <laughs> Another nice tailor, look at that. And again, as I'm saying, if you're going to lower and slow your retrieve down, the hook goes right into their mouth and it's ideal because they're coming up and hunting that lure rather than a reaction bite of something going past super fast and they're having that swipe at it. So, a couple of ideas there for you. That might help you out when you are going to wet a line. But again, nice tailor. Break him up, get that blood going. Drain it out, you want that blood gone. Again, if you don't like this, I'm telling you, this is just part of it. You gotta get that blood out of that fish, he's dead. Now, but we are just getting that blood to drain out. Super important to do that. Nice sailor, take him on that Helco twisty. Great lure, great fish, great times. I don't know if there's another one out there. Let's have that drag pulling out nice and steady.
Where are you, mate? I can't see you. Where are you, buddy? Oh, big jump. Big Taylor. Solid fish. Okay, we got this wave here. Come on, come on. No. Oh, yay. <laughs> Oh no, we got this run out water here. Wanna keep his head towards us, come back. Come back, get this next wave to bring him on in. Oh! <laughs> oh, you live and learn by the loss of a fish. Right at the feet, what a lot of fun. I tell you what, I think I've got enough now anyway. I got my weighted bag with a couple of fish in it. Changing locations, you might have noticed that the swell's a little bit bigger around these points. And of course the gutter really starting to form as that tide drops away. But just patience, persistence, try a new different area. And I tell you what, you'll come up trumps and have a blast. Even if you do lose a few, but I'll tell you what, I've gained a couple in there as well. A lot of fun to get you underway. Here's some tips for the next time you're chasing Taylor. <laughs> My tips, you'll need a medium six to eight kilogram, 12 foot spin combo. Braid, 20 pound. Fluorocarbon leader, 40 pound, about six feet. A 50 gram Halco twisty and silver is ideal. Now you need to work the deeper beach gutters and a point of interest, is to fish those backwash areas where the whitewash is flowing into the deeper water. And do the drag up. Good luck. And of course, thanks for watching Step Outside YouTube channel for lots of cooking and fishing action. Like, subscribe, and of course, comment for more catches like this and cooking recipes.